One of my favorite things about Fire Emblem is that I never get bored of it, even when no new games have come out in a while and I'm replaying Sacred Stones for the 800th time. Normally I'm not a guy that replays games much, so what is it about Fire Emblem as a series that makes it so replayable to me? I think there's a lot of factors, but before getting into specific games, let's look at some factors that basically apply to the entire series. First, Fire Emblem games tend to give you more units than you're able to use in a single playthrough. During a run of a Fire Emblem game, you make tons of decisions around who gets benched and who regularly gets deployed. And when making these decisions the first few times, I'm constantly thinking, well, what if I used this other unit? Let's do another run and find out. So if you're really invested in the gameplay of Fire Emblem, there's a lot of incentive to try again with different armies and see what you can get. Additionally, people just fall in love with Fire Emblem units. Everyone has their favorite cast of characters, and it's always fun to return to your favorite Fire Emblem cast and refresh yourself on the scenes that made you love them in the first place. And maybe this playthrough you'll even try a different combination of units than you did last time. The beauty of this is that changing your army also often changes the way that you approach the game. Let's take Fire Emblem Engage. Maybe in one playthrough you're using Clan and Saline, and that makes it pretty easy to deal with armored units in the mid-game. And maybe in your next playthrough your only magic user is Citrine. That means you're gonna have to approach armored units differently or come up with different ways to deal with them, like forging an armor slayer, taking them on one at a time, or giving a unit a magic weapon like a Leaven Sword. On the flip side, if you replaced your second mage with a fast physical unit like Lapis, you may have an easier time with squishy mages that she can one round. This basically applies to every Fire Emblem game. Switching up your team can encourage you to take different preparations or force you to play a map in a slightly different way. So if you really mix up your army, a second playthrough can feel almost as fresh as the first since you need to come up with strategies to overcome challenges that are more difficult for your new team. And if you're like me, you'll be thinking the whole second playthrough about which challenges were most difficult for each run and how you can make a third team with a perfect combination of units from each one. This kind of makes it sound like games with larger casts are more replayable, but I don't necessarily think that's the case. Shadow Dragon, for example, has a massive playable cast, but due to the nature of the very flexible reclassing system, a lot of units don't feel mechanically distinct, so much as just filler units that are primarily there for if you take an early death and need to replace someone. Units really only add to replay value if they are mechanically unique enough to justify another run, or if something about their character is so enticing that I just have to have them in my army in another playthrough. A good example of what I mean by mechanically unique is something like Fire Emblem 7's three early magic units, Urk, Lucius, and Kanas. All three are early magic users that get staves on promotion, but they each have their own niche. Lucius has very high magic, Urk is fast enough to double more often, and Kanas is a little bulkier and comes close to promotion. Plus they all use different tomes which can give them some slightly different use cases, like you can use Kanas with Nosferatu or Luna. Which of these early casters you go with will depend on what your team composition is, or you might even want to use multiple. But they feel different enough that which one you choose will change depending on your playthrough, because they have slightly different niches. The point is that these units are distinct enough for you to wonder how things might have gone if you picked a different one, which can make you want to play again. In contrast, a unit like Rad in Shadow Dragon really doesn't inspire you to replay to use him, unless you just love his hair like I do. Another thing that makes all Fire Emblem games replayable is how heavily they rely on RNG. You can play a map twice with the exact same team and have slightly different experiences, as random number generation can cause maps to play out differently. You could get a lucky hit, or receive an unlucky crit, and it will completely change the way that you need to play the next turn. While many people have come up with optimized strategies that end maps quickly and minimize the opportunities for RNG to ruin your plans, in casual play, RNG makes maps play out differently most of the time you play them, especially once you escape the early game and maps start to be bigger and have more combat. This is compounded by many maps offering multiple solutions, and the best answer may not be obvious on the first playthrough, so replays are a chance to face new challenges with new approaches to maps. Maybe you can do a map faster than last time, or maybe you can get more experience if you take a different route to the boss. Lots of things to consider every time you load up the game. Another major influence RNG has is on unit growths. While Fire Emblem Engage has a fixed growths mode, most Fire Emblem playthroughs are done with random growths, meaning that each unit has a chance to increase any stat on a level up, with each one being weighted higher or lower depending on the unit. 
This means that units won't be exactly the same every playthrough, which can have some major implications for your game. For example, in my current Fire Emblem Engage playthrough, my Anna leveled build four times early in the game, meaning she could double way more enemies with heavy bows like the Radiant Bow and Long Bow, which she would normally lose three or four speed from using. This makes a huge difference as she can one round kill a lot more enemies in that playthrough than another one I'm doing where she didn't get those build levels and I have to use her in a different way, either for chip or just for killing armors. Random growths basically just ensure that no two playthroughs will be exactly the same, even if you use the same units. Random growths can also force you to change your plans on the fly. Maybe you were planning for a certain unit to be your main combat carry or boss killer, but he doesn't grow his strength enough to one round enemies or reliably boss kill. Well now you either need to pick a new carry or come up with new strategies that allow another unit to help out with killing the boss. Or in a game like Fire Emblem Engage, maybe you can patch up their weaknesses with an emblem that increases strength or a reclass to a class with a higher strength base. Most Fire Emblem games also offer multiple difficulty levels, and I enjoy working my way up to the hardest. I often do my first playthrough on normal or hard so I can take it easy, before trying Maddening or Lunatic mode later on. Shadow Dragon even included five different hard modes, so for players that want to work their way up a ladder of challenges, different difficulties can add additional satisfying gameplay. What's great about all the elements I've mentioned so far is that they layer on top of each other. Your second playthrough of a game with new units, new RNG, a new difficulty, and new ideas on how to tackle maps could look completely different than your first one at least after the early game where players are typically restricted to a small number of units. So those features common to most Fire Emblem games are why the series as a whole is fairly replayable to me, but I also want to get into why some specific games are more replayable than others and why some aren't. First, many Fire Emblem games have included unit customization. This looks a little bit different game to game, but it adds replay value in all of them as you can make different decisions for your units in subsequent games. An early example of this is Crusader Scrolls in Fire Emblem Thracia 776. These items influence the growth rates of units, allowing you to heavily shape how a unit grows. For example, if you really love Ronin and want to give him some better strength, you could pass him a couple strength increasing scrolls to beef him up a bit. Or if you wanted him to be dodgier, give him one that helps his speed. Only one unit can hold each scroll at a time though, so you have to plan out specifically how you want to boost each one based on what scrolls are going to be available to you, and it's a fun thing to tweak every playthrough. More recently, Fire Emblem games have started playing a lot more fast and loose with the class system as well. In games like Fire Emblem Engage and Fire Emblem Three Houses, any unit can become almost any class, and each unit has customizable skill slots that can really differentiate them. For example, a warrior with Wrath and Vantage plays very differently than one with Dual Assist Plus and Speed Plus 5. One of the upsides of this system is that you can repeatedly play new games with exclusively your favorite characters and still get a different experience by putting them into different classes and using different skills each time. And for people that are into optimizing, there's a lot to experiment with here. Even if Three Houses settled in a Wyvern Plus support meta and Engage's meta is starting to take shape, there's still so many options you can play with. The kings of unit customization, though, are Fates and Awakening. Characters in these games have access to multiple classes and give you tons of skills to choose from. These games add another wrinkle in the form of child units. When you pair units up, you can recruit their child later, who can inherit skills and also have their stats and class options influenced by their parents. This means for many units you aren't just deciding what build is best for them, but also what build passes down the most useful features to their child. There are other games that have highly customizable characters or child units, but Fates and Awakening are the only ones that have both, except for arguably Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War, but I would argue the units are a lot less customizable in that game. Along with having a bunch of mechanically interesting maps, the unit customization makes a game like Fate's Conquest really appealing for people interested in creating builds. You can experiment with different pairings, classes, and skills over dozens of playthroughs, and you'll never really get tired of it if that's something you enjoy. Another element that can add replay value to a Fire Emblem game is a route split. A route split is a portion of any Fire Emblem game where there are two possible sets of maps for you to play, and you only see one per playthrough. An example of this is in Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones, which has an 8 chapter route split where you follow only one of the game's lords, either Erika or Ephraim. So to experience everything the game has to offer, you have to play it at least twice. 
Other games have experimented with smaller route splits, and some of them even have more than one. For example, in Fire Emblem 6, there's a route split starting at Chapter 10, and then another one starting at Chapter 17, so you have to play at least twice to see all the maps, and four times if you want to see all the possible combinations, which you might want to if you're interested in optimizing the game, or if you just want to use units from specific route splits in your army. Either way, route splits add just a little bit of extra replay value as they encourage you to play the game at least a couple times in order to see all the story content the game has to offer. Some people don't like this and prefer to get all the plot in one go, but as long as each route stands well on its own, I enjoy having multiple to play through. Sacred Stones is actually one of my favorite games to replay since alternating routes make the game stay a little fresher for longer for me. It's also nice and easy, so when I'm looking to casually breeze through a Fire Emblem game, Sacred Stones is a great pick. It's like strategy RPG comfort food for me. Three Houses offers one of the most ambitious route splits in the series by having four separate routes in one game, but it has one issue that makes it a tough replay for me, and that's that the monastery takes a long time. I don't mind the monastery on my first couple playthroughs because it adds a lot to build the world and it gives opportunities for characters to shine when you can talk to them between battles and see their reactions to things, but once I've read all the dialogue once, it's still a time-consuming excursion that I feel compelled to go through multiple times per map, although New Game Plus features do help with that a bit. Still, Three Houses will be pretty replayable at least a few times for people that like the writing in the story, and if you're into unit customization there's a ton here. And for me, that was enough to justify 6 plus playthroughs. It also has a really lovable cast of characters, which occasionally gets me wanting to return to Three Houses. Some of the Fire Emblem games I find least replayable are ones that contain frequent, unskippable tedium. The Monastery is a good example of this, but Three Houses offers other replay value that I appreciate. Another game that suffers from this issue is Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Radiant Dawn is full of large maps with tons of enemy units, so enemy phases can really drag, especially when Radiant Dawn has some very lengthy animations. What's worse is that if you're using a fresh memory card, you can't even turn animations off, so the result is that you can spend a lot of time on a map, and god forbid you lose a map at the last minute. Then you have to go through the whole long process again. This is part of why I tend to enjoy replaying Fire Emblem games a little bit more when they have shorter maps or offer some mistake affordance such as Shadow Dragon's save tiles or Engage's Time Crystal. Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War also suffers from giant maps and slow enemy phases, but it does have a fair amount of unit customization that helps me enjoy it a bit more on replay, especially since you can save pretty often to reduce the risk of having to replay large sections of the map if you mess up. So, on the whole, the fundamental nature of RNG elements, unit customization, and good maps make Fire Emblem as a series very replayable. But things like route splits, child units, and a variety of difficulty options can make some games more replayable than others. My favorite Fire Emblem to replay is Sacred Stones, but what's yours and what is it about it that makes it so replayable to you? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you liked this video and you want to see more content like it, consider hitting the like or subscribe button so that you never miss an upload, and have yourself an awesome week.